Part of what makes Twin Flame Connection both so intense and also at times so confusing is the fact that by society's standards and under a traditional understanding of love and connection, our twin flame is actually not typically still in the process of our healing an ideal life partner, again, by society's standards and conventional understanding of love. This is because the way that society traditionally understands ideal partnership is the bringing together of two people that bridge one another's weaknesses, that, as we say, complement one another's strengths and weaknesses. So under this traditional view of love and relationship, if I had or have certain weak points within myself, I would seek out a partner who has those points as strengths within themselves, which then leads to, again, by society standards, an ideal form of romantic partnership. The reason Twin Flame Connection falls so outside of this traditional view of ideal partnership is twin flames are one another's perfect energetic mirror, not necessarily one another's ideal, traditionally speaking, partner. Because if two twin flames within themselves share the exact same weak points and strong points, energetically speaking, then you can see how this could be very triggering at times. With your twin flame, when you look at them, when you truly see them on a soul level, on an energetic level, what you are seeing is yourself, your soul's essence reflected back to you perfectly. However, when we have certain unhealed wounds, patterns, or dynamics within ourselves, and our twin flame then reflects those wounds, those exact wounds back to us, this again is what leads to a kind of triggering. Now, on the other side of this, when we hear the word trigger, often we think of something negative. We think, oh, this person is triggering me. They're causing this negative reaction within me. I really want to redefine that word in the context of twin flame connection. Our twin flame is not triggering us in the traditional sense. What they are truly triggering is our highest level of soul evolution. Because through connecting with our twin flame, we have the opportunity to see ourselves energetically so clearly that we are then able to participate in a kind of deep level introspection and resulting healing that most are never able to accomplish in one lifetime. That is part of why the twin flame path is such a challenging and highly advanced soul path to select in this lifetime. So in this podcast, I am going to discuss twin flame mirroring, what it means to be mirrored by your twin flame, and more importantly, how we can use the twin flame mirror exercise as an incredibly powerful tool and actually a portal to deeply healing both ourselves and our twin flame connection and shifting into a union state with our twin flame that then of course will manifest physically as well. But before I get into that, allow me to introduce myself to anyone here who might be new. Welcome, my name is Infinity and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. Please be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell if you enjoy Twin Flame content and would like to be part of our beautiful, high vibrational soul tribe here on YouTube. So what is Twin Flame mirroring? Well, twin flame mirroring means that our twin flame in every single moment is perfectly reflecting to us energetically 
what is going on within us. This is because we share the same soul essence. Twin flames actually choose to incarnate in this way, to choose this twin flame path in order to experience being physically in separate bodies, having this physical separation between them naturally so that through their physical lifetime, they can see themselves energetically more clearly through seeing themselves in the other and in doing so in this kind of very radical form of self-evaluation and introspection, they are then capable of reaching heights of soul growth, soul evolution, and true soul expression unlike that which they could ever hope to accomplish if they were not incarnated in this way, if they were not a twin flame. So the problem with twin flame mirroring, why it's so confusing at times to us from our physical human perspective, is we're talking about an energetic mirroring here. So your twin flame is perfectly reflecting to you energetic wounds, patterns, dynamics, but those could actually manifest very differently between you in the physical world. In fact, very frequently, the divine masculine twin flame will mirror this energy in a much more physical way because it is the natural nature of the divine masculine to be more matrix oriented in general, meaning to be more focused on this physical 3D world. They choose to experience a much denser, more 3D oriented paradigm life view in this lifetime in order to transmute those heavier, denser energies. Whereas the divine feminine typically manifests this energy mirroring in a more emotional kind of way through emotional wounds and patterns and dynamics that happen very much more on an abstract level. They are oftentimes much more symbolic and less physical in nature than what her divine masculine counterpart experiences. Now remember, the labels divine masculine and divine feminine are describing energies, so they are not connected to male or female in any way. So what I mean by this is, let's say you are the divine feminine. What you might see manifested in your twin flame divine masculine counterpart might look very different than what is being reflected within yourself. Because again, your divine masculine might be manifesting that particular energy wound or dynamic in a very 3D physical kind of way. Whereas for you, the wound might dominantly exist within your emotional body. It might be more emotionally manifested as opposed to physical. So what are a few examples of this? Because I know this is quite confusing because it really contradicts our human understanding, how we are programmed to see and believe these kinds of experiences. So one example of this kind of twin flame mirroring between a masculine and a feminine could look something like this. There could be a divine masculine who is manifesting in his life some kind of a behavior pattern that we would label as negative. This could be some kind of an addictive pattern, some kind of a negative pattern that he just seems to cycle through again and again. But in this case, it is something that is very visible. It is highly visible. That is actually one of the keys here. Very often for the divine masculine, the pattern is more visible in the 3D world than it is for the divine feminine. Again, I'm speaking very generally. This can differ depending on your unique circumstances and connection. So in this case, the divine feminine may be mirroring or reflecting that negative behavior pattern of the divine masculine within herself. So when you get to the root of this pattern, this addictive behavior or negative pattern, you may find that it is rooted in numbing. The purpose of this behavior for the masculine is to numb something that he is not wanting to face or heal on a deep level. So the divine feminine herself 
might be self-numbing in different kinds of ways. This could be emotional numbing of the self. She could be using other less visible coping mechanisms to numb her own pain, pain that she is not yet ready to face and to heal within herself. A second example of twin flame mirroring would be there could be a divine masculine who, in the words of his divine feminine counterpart, doesn't want to commit to the twin flame relationship in the physical, let's say. Well, on the other side of this, Potentially, the Divine Feminine could be reflecting this lack of commitment within herself. So perhaps she is, in some sense, hiding. Let's say that she feels her Divine Masculine isn't wanting to be open about their connection, which is why he isn't wanting to commit, isn't wanting to label. Well, there could be a Divine Feminine who, within herself or her life, isn't wanting to reveal, to be open about her true self, to be authentic with the people around her, to truly commit to herself. She could be self-betraying in some way, not fully committing to herself, which is then being reflected back in the self-betrayal or self-denial the divine masculine is going through where he is then denying or not committing in the physical to the connection in some sense. Again, these are just two examples. Twin flame mirroring can occur in limitless numbers of unique and specific ways depending on your circumstances. This is just to give you an idea of how twin flame mirroring works. So now that we understand it, the true question here is how can we utilize a dynamic that can be extremely frustrating, extremely confusing, and even triggering between two twin flames and transform that dynamic into a portal through which we can step, can shift into deeper levels of unified consciousness between us and our twin union that must begin with union with the self healing the self and the answer is through the mirror exercise so what is the mirror exercise essentially the mirror exercise is simply using this mirroring dynamic that occurs most intensely and perfectly between twin flames to our advantage to actually see what our twin flame is reflecting about us about some kind of wound or dynamic energetically within ourself that we can then intrinsically heal and in doing this intrinsic healing can actually powerfully and quickly shift the tide shift the dynamic of our twin flame connection in the physical world as well. So quickly to answer a question I get about the mirror technique, what happens if you are someone who is not 100% sure whether the person you are dealing with is a twin flame? What happens if you use the mirror technique on a karmic relationship or on a soulmate relationship or just on any other form of love connection if they turn out to not be your twin? And of course, I'm only speaking to those of you who are unsure within yourself. I'm not at all speaking as to whether or not this person is your twin. That answer is always and only within you. If this person is not your twin flame, there is no harm in using the mirror exercise on this person. And in fact, using the mirror exercise is one of the fastest ways to elevate you, to shift you into true twin flame connection, regardless of whether that person is the person you are currently with in the physical or thinking of in the physical or not. And the reason is this connection or rather this technique will heal your twin flame connection regardless of whether or not the person you think you are using it on is your twin flame, which I know sounds confusing, but the reason this is, is because this technique is used to identify negative patterns, dynamics, and unhealed wounds within yourself to shift you into deeper levels of total self reconnection, which of course, as I always say, unconditional self-love that total reconnection with self 
is the key to reconnecting in the physical with your twin flame because self-love is equivalent to unconditional love, which is equivalent to twin flame love. So as you begin to radiate a stronger frequency of self-love by healing these dynamics that you are uncovering through the mirror technique, by shifting yourself into a more healed, higher vibrational state of being, if this person you are using the mirror technique on in the physical is not your twin flame, what you will find is that as you heal yourself, as you raise your vibration, you will naturally vibrate out of this non-twin flame relationship and into relationship with your twin flame, into union, greater union with your true twin flame. And this will all happen very naturally, very effortlessly because you are shifting yourself. And whenever we shift ourselves, whenever we shift the energy within us, our entire reality begins to effortlessly change to align with that new frequency within us. Now, of course, if this person is your twin flame, as you shift and heal within yourself, they will not naturally vibrate out of your life or your reality. What will happen is you will vibrate closer to one another. You will begin to peel back all of those layers and blocks that could potentially be keeping you distanced in the physical world. And you will manifest a deeper, more harmonious physical connection to match, again, that shift you are making energetically within yourself. For best results with this mirror technique, I also recommend to first shift your mind into what we call an alpha state, which is changing your brainwave frequency to match the level of the subconscious to really relax the conscious mind. And the reason I say this is the one thing that can prevent the mirror technique from working is if we allow our ego to get too involved, to become too triggered by what we are uncovering, to truly have introspection, raw honesty and authenticity with ourselves and to therefore heal, heal these dynamics. And the ego exists in the conscious mind. So as we relax the conscious and tap into the subconscious, we are truly able to do this exercise effectively. So the best way to shift into this subconscious mind is through listening to subliminals because the subliminals I've created contain both binaural beat frequencies, which are designed to totally retrain the frequency of your mind into that alpha state. And they also contain subliminal affirmations, which are affirmations your conscious mind can't hear and therefore cannot reject. So these unconscious affirmations are actually capable of bypassing the conscious filters of your mind and making really deep lasting impressions on the subconscious. So for this exercise specifically, I recommend my seven chakra twin flame clearing subliminal. This is my most comprehensive comprehensive subliminal for twin flames because it contains over 100 affirmations that are targeted to uproot and release any blockages, negative beliefs, or negative frequencies that are stored within any of the seven chakras of the energy body. Also, the best time to listen to this subliminal and to do this exercise is early in the morning because the first 20 minutes upon awakening, our mind is still relatively in that alpha state from when we were sleeping. So the link to this powerful seven chakra twin flame clearing subliminal that I recommend using for best results with the mirror exercise, listening to it as you do this exercise is in the pinned comment and description box under this video. It comes from my website, soundandsoulful.com, which as you can see on the screen has over 100 subliminals for all areas of life. You can try it out completely free by creating a free trial account on my website. And again, that information is linked below. So now let's get into step-by-step -step the twin flame mirror exercise. Step one, in as few of words as possible. And that is essential here. And I'll tell you why in a moment, write out what about your twin flame is bothering you, is causing you to feel triggered, that you want to change, whatever has caused you to come to this mere exercise at this particular time. 
The reason I say to use as few of words as possible is because by the law of attraction, what we fixate on actually attracts more alike frequencies, ideas, and experiences to it. So it's essential to not place more focus than necessary on the quote unquote negative thing about your twin flame that you are noticing or experiencing. So once you've written this down, just to give you a jumping off point here, step number two is to actually take that dynamic and now turn it inward to change the pronouns of that sentence or statement or idea from he or she or they to I. So let's say you are saying my twin flame is being so stubborn. He is being stubborn and I don't like it or something like that to simplify. You could then in step number two, write that same sentence, but using I instead of he or they. So in this case, you could say, how am I being stubborn? And like, let's say in a way that I don't like or don't feel comfortable with or that I know isn't right for me. Now, at first, this might seem a bit strange, a bit abstract, but that is where step number three and four come into play. So with step three, you now need to ask yourself, is there anything true about this statement? When I turn it back and use the pronouns I, is there anything I am personally reflecting within myself about this thing I am seeing in my twin flame that I don't like? And at first you might be kind of, or your ego might be kind of jumping in to say, no, I don't really see this within myself, but that's where the next steps are important because you really have to go deeper with this, really reaffirming to yourself. Okay. If this person is my true twin flame, my true divine counterpart, I accept that we are perfect energetic mirrors. So for a moment, lay aside all of those negative labels, all of those judgments toward your twin flame and this action, behavior, mindset, whatever it is about them that is coming up for you here and truly close your eyes and ask, how am I or how could I be reflecting this same aspect, trait, or dynamic? Now, what I find most helpful is to actually journal, to allow yourself to free write because as we free write, we can actually tap into our subconscious in this way. And typically these mirrored dynamics between twin flames are stored very deeply unconsciously. So allow yourself to free write about any feelings, thoughts, responses that are coming up about this situation, about how you could be reflecting this dynamic within yourself and free write until you feel like you hit on something. You have that kind of aha moment of, okay, this is what was being reflected to me. This is that dynamic where it exists within me. And then after you've done that, we have to do what we call reintegration. So when we talk about shadow work, essentially this is shadow work, except on twin flame connection or in the context of twin flame connection and shadow work is the foundation of light work, which is essentially taking our shadow aspects, the shadow self, those parts of us that are so deeply unconscious, they are outside the light of our consciousness, which is why they are called shadows, taking those aspects of self in the shadows and bringing them into the light because only by bringing those unconscious shadows of ourself into the light can we then allow them to be dissolved by the light. Can we then allow them to be healed? So what we need to do here is close our eyes, allow your conscious mind again to relax, listen to subliminals if this helps you with relaxing the conscious mind, and then allow yourself to visualize that part of yourself that is in the shadows or was in the shadows that was wounded, that was unseen, that didn't feel worthy of being seen, that was being judged. Because really when we are judging our twin flame externally for this behavior, this dynamic, whatever it is, this is really our self-judgment manifested, reflected outward. 
So it's time here in this step to fully re-accept that part of ourself that we were judging or rejecting in the form of external judgment toward our twin. To allow that part of ourselves to be seen, to be surrounded in love, to be embraced, whatever that looks like or feels like for you. And then you can close out this practice for the time being. Now, of course, this mirror exercise is something that needs to be utilized over and over again because we all have many aspects of ourself that are taken on as shadows in order to be transmuted into light through this mirroring of twin flame connection because really we've chosen being a twin flame and experiencing this connection for this exact purpose to give us a vehicle for accelerated soul growth through this kind of shadow work through this deep inner healing so i really hope this podcast was helpful for you if it was or if you have any thoughts to share be sure to leave me a comment under this video also make sure you are subscribed so that you get notified whenever i post new twin flame content or readings the twin flame seven chakra clearing supplemental that i really highly recommend meditating with for 21 days straight in the morning especially remember the morning is the best time for meditation because it is the ideal window of time for training your frequency fully into that alpha state the link to this seven chakra clearing is in the pinned comment and description box under this video I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your day, and I will talk to you again in the next podcast.